Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I'm traveling right now in Latvia, so I'm having my whole setup on the move and it's uh, proving it to be a little bit more challenging to set it up. So please enjoy the following clip that I got recorded before I head on to my travels and I'm going to bring to you more uh, as I figure out my technical problems. And I want to talk about Russia being in complete disarray because of Prigozhin's coup. Because as much as propaganda in Russia wants to put a brave face on about how well they dealt with the uh, mutiny, the truth is, for about two days, Russia was without government. Putin fled, everyone in the uh, ministries and so on also ran away, and what we know right now was there to defend Russia was about 10,000 force of mostly like riot police with riot police gear. So I'm saying batons, maybe some Kalashnikovs, yes, maybe some uh, uh, heavy machine guns, yes, but not much else, not much really heavy machinery. So if a couple of tanks would arrive with like 4,000 troops that Prigozhin had, he could easily get to Kremlin, he could easily get into Kremlin and sit into the place of power. Hell, like if there was a plumber in Kremlin that just happened to stroll into Putin's cabinet, he could have easily just sat in the chair and say, I am the new uh, ruler of Russia. Because what we've seen happen in Russia is that Russian population would just flock to completely anyone if they would just uh, show that they're mildly strong compared to Putin. And Putin has lost a lot. He has been weak during this event. And unfortunately, the way that this event has resulted, he is now even weaker because not only that he was not able to stop Prigozhin, he also didn't really address the problem. A lot of people were expecting, well, what will Putin do after now this coup? Like, how will this, how he will sell this as a victory for themselves? How will he motivate the population of Russia to believe in him again? And the answer is, he doesn't. Because not only there are people that what were completely angry with Russian politics because they believe Prigozhin and some of them still believe Prigozhin, some of them also are mad with Prigozhin and they're now mad at everyone. But now they're more than ever mad at Putin because not only he didn't address the mutiny, he didn't come out back as a strong man after the mutiny. And this is creating a complete power vacuum inside of Russia. Now, there is not, nothing that is challenging Russian control so far, but this is an immense challenge. It's important to underscore just how much in disarray they are, because right now we've heard that they're trying to do purges. They're trying to purge all the pro-Wagner uh, pro loyalists. So a lot of these loyalists that were working with Wagnerites at one time or another are now being detained. Like, for example, General Surawikin, the bald guy, you know, he was uh, supposedly arrested and is now being detained for treason. Then there are other people that are trying to capture and so on. So it's, it's, it's a complete shit show what is happening down there. And more than that, we see that, for example, Zolotov, that actually has the quote of the week. It's like a slight departure. So there was a joke when the war started that after Russia was not able to capture Kyiv in three days, that the joke was that if Ukrainians would then go towards Moscow, then Russian politicians would say, okay, Ukraine will let Ukrainians uh, capture uh, like Rostov, Voronezh, Kursk and everything else, but we're never going to surrender the, the Moscow. So it's like a joke that like nothing matters for them. And the, the, the fact is that this Zolotov guy, the, the general that commands the, the Rostov, Guardia, which is the riot police force, he <laughs> he basically said that, oh, so you know, we've heard that they took over Rostov and Voronezh, uh, and this is, was terrible, but uh, we need to conserve our force, so we would never let them take Moscow. And this is funny because uh, it was a meme before that, and now he basically uh, said the meme in reality, and everyone laughed at him. And this is basically the easiest way to describe the current situation, because now Zolotov claims that Rosguardia should have their own tanks, and because they don't have tanks, like, why would you need tanks to fight uh, civil crowds? And now apparently you do. 
And now the question is, where would these tanks come from? Where do you think they will produce the tanks? Well, it's two places. It's either the front lines or the factories. And wherever you go, that means that less tanks are going to go to the front line to fight Ukrainians. And this is the scale of, of problems that is just growing in Russia. The problems in Russia will continue being escalated. Resolution that was achieved with Prigozhin in no way stabilized the situation in Moscow. And we're going to see round two. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to be a mutiny or anything else, but there is going to be a resource drain on what's going to happen in the Russia because a lot of the Russian focus and especially Putin's focus has been switched from whatever is happening in Ukraine to whatever is happening inside of Russia. Putin has been performing like a speech after speech after speech. And people already is like, like, can you can you say anything? Because he is literally panicking. You can see that he's looking for anything that will resonate with the crowd. He is looking for anything that will kind of bring him again the image of a strongman. And this switches focus. Putin is now more focused on what's happening with his chair than he's really focused on what's happening with the war. It's incredible how much damage the Prigozhin supposed mutiny did to Putin. It triggered one of the worst, if not the worst, fear that Putin has, the fear of mutiny. This fear appeared in him when he was uh, in Berlin because he was there when the uh, when the German uh, Germans took down the Berlin Wall. He was one of the KGB agent in the area. So when the angry crowd came to his place, there are many many records that this is was the moment that defined Putin and his fear of of an uprising. Like this this is a deep seated terror for him. So when Prigozhin, like someone that he trusted, uh, supposedly trusted, you know, someone in his court started mutiny against him, it's it's really tapped into his, uh, his terror factor, his absolute fear. Moreover, people are now for some reason discussing that uh, Putin is going to switch Shaigu. I don't think he's going to switch Shaigu. Like, because what Putin right now is looking mostly for is loyalty. He's like, I need loyal people in my area. So as much as Shoigu is shit, as much as Gerasimov is shit, they were staying loyal to Putin and that he can see. And I'm pretty sure that he is not going to be willing to change the cards right now when he's so uncertain of the future.